had the vision since I was 16. I knew that one day I needed to be guardian of a piece of land so that there was a place that people could come and connect back in and, and get the power of what nature can do for us. You know, and I would vision it and I would dream it. There was very much this clear image I used to get of these two oak trees. And then when I walked through the gate here and these trees were like the first thing I saw, I just burst into tears because I was like, I know now that this is the place. We hold you in a circle. We hold you in a Forest of Dean had been somewhere that I'd come to a lot in my life and, and had always had this idea, I know I'll end up here. The land here is incredibly powerful since the beginning of time, it's been a forest. But then this short period in history where the land got mined, I could feel the trauma of the land. The land was asking me to help it to heal from the trauma that it had experienced and that mirrored exactly the work around us humans. Not only are we hurting each other but we're hurting the land as well and I could feel the depth and the power of the land beneath that layer and tuned into that. You know we work with the permaculture principle which is you just listen to the land because so much of the time you know, humans come to a piece of the land and they've got their grand design. This is the grand design I am going to impose on nature and I'm going to move those trees. I'm going to have a flower bed over here. And, and actually, what nature needs is for us to listen. So when I was about four, I'm not feeling loved, held, cared for, safe. I put my nose right into this rose. And while I was taking in the smell of that rose, I was back in, in the light. I was back in the place where everything was okay. I was back in, oh, God, I can feel my heart. I feel safe. I feel joy. Oh, come on, oh. Because nature doesn't have this human judgment and this potential, like, shaming towards us, it's a way that we can feel seen. Like sometimes I'll walk through the forest and I'll just ask the trees to see me. And the love that comes back, because there's no condition around it. There's no condition. And so it's a place I can safely reopen my heart and remember like, oh yeah, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to be open. And just that simple act of barefoot on the ground, somehow the anxiety that I felt just seemed to eat. I just felt more in my body. And eventually, yeah, I've arrived here. It's like I just felt like I want everybody to know this love that is coming from here is strengthening my heart. I mean, we are made of earth, air, fire and water. And these four elements sit within the wheel of life. All the work that we do here is embedded within the Celtic wheel of life and it follows the seasons. Each of these elements carry a teaching. So the element of water, for example, in terms of an emotional teaching, it's teaching us about grief, of our vulnerability, of our feeling nature, of our intuitive nature, whereas fire would be more about getting in touch with our anger, we need fire within us because our fire is also our boundaries. You know, it's, like, it's our passion. Air connects us to our consciousness. Words are powerful. And the whole universe is just sound vibration, ultimately. And then, of course, Earth, which is like our physical being. Everything manifest in the physical. And spirit, or the mystery, or the sacred, it is infused within every physical thing. I am just as sacred as this tree, as that leaf that's just fallen, everything is an embodiment of sacred. So in that way, if we can feel the sacredness of this, it's a bridge. If we go, okay, well, if I'm this and I can appreciate this, maybe I can start to appreciate this. Once we embed ourselves into nature and we let our hearts connect in that way, 
the longing has somewhere to land that feels manageable for us, that, that, that opens us into inspiration rather than takes us into the sort of the despair and pit of, oh my God, the world's all falling apart, what do I do? Take me home over the green, green fields and far away. So whether it's meditating on a flower, admiring a dragonfly, just being peaceful by the water here, I can see how nature really helps to open you up, to feel again, to stop the numbness. That certainly was the case with me. And far away. And when I first arrived here, there was an energy, a sanctity about this land, this piece of land around these two oaks, male and female. And I needed to ask for permission to enter this sacred space, to be here. Ceremony for me is a bridge that links us from the, the daily sort of mundaneness of life into the deeper meaning of why we're here, which is to be in a moment of, uh, really, of love, of beauty. We know we've come here for more than the mortgage and, and the slog of work. We know that, but we're so far away from it because we've lost the mechanisms that connect us to it. And one of them is ceremony. So we pray to you, air. Ceremony is about bringing intention to something and working with the energies that live beyond the rational. That we can vision, vision a new earth, a new world. I got this really strong download that I had to build this ginormous womb in the earth for everybody to come in and be able to do ceremony in. We took out some earth from the side of the hill. We did that in ceremony. We had a whole group of people come and gather. We sang every morning. We offered our prayers. We listened. We asked permission. And this got burst. It had to be really low to the ground, like you were going inside the womb and into the earth itself. The structure took seven and a half days with 24 people. The actual walls were made from cordwood, which is oak cut in the round, you build up your walls inside with this cob made from a mix of straw, horse manure, sand and clay. It's a structure that's got what's called a reciprocal roof. This is 27 foot inside without having a central pole. And all the water drains off down into these drain points, comes out there and goes into a setway. We're souls. We're here to experience love, here to experience beauty, here to experience magic. What are the portals and the gateways within which we can experience that magic? And one of them is coming into a lodge like this, being able to tune in. And, and when we sing, for example, it's like it opens our heart. We hold you in our circle. Doing this work is absolutely essential. Working with you also helped me reconnect with that beautiful magic. Very patient. <laughs> yeah, I think she is very patient. <laughs> She's very fearless about naming the elephant in the room, which is actually a huge relief. And everyone starts laughing and they're like, oh, okay, I can be a normal woman. I think our hunger to be in circles is a longing at a deep level to feel this sense of belonging. It's, it's like we all have this holy wound, a core belief that we're somehow fundamentally bad, like I'm not enough. I'm not lovable, there's something bad and wrong with me. And then we look at life through the lens of this belief. When we come into circle, you're longing to be seen and accepted. So the fact that there are these people witnessing that there's a place for us does something to our psyche because it taps us back into this collective piece of belonging. Because there's a collective wound here, because we haven't been embedded in a village. We haven't been welcomed by the fourth generation of grandparents. We haven't got this familiarity of land and we know our ancestors are buried just over there. Healing our holy wound in order to heal the world. Really it's working with the father wound and the mother wound. And it sits in an ancestral line. It isn't just this generation. The fundamental core of the women's work is to help women to connect with their womb consciousness. The cycle actually is the teacher. This is the teacher, this is the teacher. The bleed holds the space for the visioning, it holds the place of surrender, it holds the place of that holy death where we give everything back to the earth and then listen 
to what wants to come through from everything, from the cosmos, from the earth, from the stars, from the trees. And we take that into the next cycle. The womb delight is particularly a map of the cyclical understanding of women's sexuality, the cyclical understanding of creativity, the cyclical understanding of self-care, the cyclical understanding of power, the cyclical understanding of how the elements work within us as we cycle through our life. So the whole women's leadership track is rooted in this understanding. The menopausal women are the high priestesses. That is where we are most potently connected to our sexuality. It's more in touch with the sacred. So if we had women in leadership who were leading from this deep embedded wisdom and their whole bodies are plugged into that cosmic energy, because that's what can happen for women, it opens something in them that is truly transformational on this planet. The men meeting that is their awakening too. That's the whole point. I'm really, really passionate passionate about inclusivity. Couples come, non-binary people come. It's literally everybody comes to this. We have to have everyone in the circle. What I would say though is the guiding principle is it's people who've already done a level of work on themselves. It is people who've already worked with their trauma to a degree and are really wanting to be change makers in the world. And, and by change makers, I, I do mean people, you know, running for leadership positions, but also parents who want to change by how they parent. So change makers can be at any level, really. But it's people who are really serious about going, you know what, I really don't want to operate from this wound anymore. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to ask those hard questions. I'm willing to go to those difficult places. But that doesn't have to be all pain and suffering. You know, this is the thing about the trauma piece. Unless the work is balanced, as is nature, you have to have winter and summer, yeah? So in that way, if we're gonna do that deep dive work, we also equally have to have beauty, ceremony, nourishment, fun, joy, because one is holding the other. They're completely interwoven, you know? It's the yin-yang sign. Thank you, Jules. Over the green, green fields and far away